What reason did you break up with your BFGF for that they will never know about? The way she treated me reminded me of how my mom treats my dad, and I never want to have a relationship as crappy as my parents. She told me that she could never see herself marrying a teacher because of money and prestige issues. I'm a teacher. She's also a teacher. The she's also a teacher really tied that up nice. I have late onset muscular dystrophy that I inherited from my mother. I have maybe about 10 years to live if I keep exercising and eating right, etc. I didn't want to make her love me any more than she already did, or have a kid, etc only to leave her like that. She doesn't know I have it, and I don't plan on telling her. She's already with someone else. Fuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuu
she was obsessed, so I pretended to be a monster so she'd never want me back, it worked, I still miss the girl I met the first year. There is nothing more awful than hurting the ones you love to keep them safe. I told her that I was breaking up with her because she could never get her priorities straight about our relationship. While this is somewhat true, the real reason I broke up with her was because she felt too safe with me. She was doing worse in school because she felt like she only needed me. She was slowly driving away her friends because we would spend a lot of time together. And she was constantly having problems with her family because I was in her life. It's been a year now, and in this time she's grown to have a healthy relationship with her friends and family and has not only brought herself back up in school, but also found and begun pursuing what she wants to do in life. She kind of hates me now, but I'm fine with that. You are the BF she deserves, but not the one she needs right now. She had a very smelly vagina. I even asked female friends how to bring it up and they were all stumped and said just break up for another reason. Don't scar the poor girl. So I said it's not working out. But really I wanted to say your vagina smells so bad it's like you wash it daily with an even smellier vagina. I tried showering with her before sex and making sure it was clean. But didn't matter. Smell. I stopped caring about his suicide threats. I found him creepy clingy and controlling from the second date and wanted to end it then. But then he came up with the suicide threats and when you're 16, you believe that crap. In retrospect, I should have just broken up with the excuse, I'm 16, you're 20, I'm saving you from statutory rape charges, trust me, I'm doing you a big favor. She said she didn't like my beard, after 2 years, beard existed before us, I'm guessing it was a if I get him to shave. It means I'm at a kind of thing. A few months later she dumped me in an email. Then told all my friends before I got the email. Within 3 days she was outside my door pleading with me to take her back. I thought about it for a long minute. Rubbed my chin in a thoughtful way and realized oh right. She tried to take away my beard. And washed my hands of her. Beard. Flawless logic. With a beard you can always get more women. But with a woman. You cannot get more beard. I wasn't physically attracted to him. It may sound shallow, but relationships need a physical aspect. Ours didn't have that, it was purely emotional and ended up suffering because I wasn't physically interested in him. I would never tell him this though, because it would crush him. Jesus Christ, can nobody here just freaking tell someone when their breath stinks? There's like 30 of you here who just made up a different story. You can bet your butt my girlfriend lets me know whenever my breath isn't dried flowers levels of perfect. It's not that hard and no one's going to be that broken up about it. No pun intended. His mother had depression and would go missing for a couple of days at a time. He was given warnings at work for when he was late because of looking after his mother and he was too proud to tell them what was going on. He really is a wonderful person that I still care for. I couldn't tell him I had been diagnosed with depression too. He had enough on his plate already, and I didn't want to burden him with the thought I could turn out like his mother. The guy was genuinely dumber than Iraq. He could not find his way from my hometown to where I was living for college. Hint, you get on one highway, drive for an hour, and get off when the sign points to the college. Literally, he got lost and I had to drive around until I found him. He couldn't tell me where he was either. The worst part? He was an officer of the effing military. He was also never on time. Like, 3 hours late to every date we had. Not just because of being lost, but just stuff came up, and acted like that was totally fine. That's weird my so used to be in the military and was never late to anything because of it. If you're on time, you're late, he still says to me. We took acid together after dating for a year and a half. While tripping I realized that he was annoying and needy. That impression never left me and a few months later I broke up with him. There were other reasons as well, but that was a big one. People don't always understand the clarity you can reach when you take acid. I remember the second time I tripped I sat and considered every negative thing about my personality and how I treated others, and solutions to improving them as well as all the positive things and ways to improve them as well. That night eventually led me to getting a degree and becoming a nurse. I split with a BF because we never argued or disagreed about anything. I thought he was too nice. 
At the time I put it down to a lack of backbone passion life. I missed him from that day forward. I'm in counseling now and realizing that the messed up relationship my parents had made me think that you had to argue fight hate each other to love each other. The good news is that I married him last year. As a really nice and non-confrontational guy, you had me a bit worried with the first part. The second part made me feel better though. Couldn't stand the whiny complaining rant she made, trying to act like a victim and claiming that everyone was against her. I was so happy to free up my schedule as a single guy and not have to concern myself with all of her problems. Honestly, she was just kind of dumb. She couldn't hold an intelligent conversation for the life of her. I fell for her personally. T. He had a small penis and was a selfish lover. That's a terrible combination lol. As a guy in a marriage where we fart and burp in front of each other, have alternating breath issues, we both drink coffee, and both have less than awesome credit. Some of you folks have impressive standards. I thought she was better off without me so I left. I felt like as long as we were together she couldn't live up to the potential I saw in her. It turns out I was right. She is now doing very well and living her dream life with another guy who is very similar to me. I'm genuinely happy for her now that the sadness is gone that is. I'm worried I'll have to do the same thing with the person I love. Everything about him is lovely. And there's so much he can do for the world. He's brilliant. And I feel like I'm holding him back a lot of the time. I'm glad it worked out for you. And that you're happy. It gives me hope. She had a weird relationship with her boss. He would message her at like 3am just to see what she was up to and how she was doing. She claims it was because he saw himself as her dad in a way, and I thought that was weird as her dad is perfectly alive and well, and a nice chap I might add. Furthermore, she would always try to get me jealous like oh I'm meeting blah tonight, maybe he'll cheat on you, in a joking way but it got too much. The reason we broke up, she didn't try hard enough to see me. I didn't feel like I loved him. After almost a year together, I knew that every time I looked in his face I didn't feel what I was supposed to. I never want him to know that I developed an eating disorder and blamed him for it. Part of the problem was that we just really couldn't connect and have normal conversations anymore. But there was always the underlying problems with food. I was under a lot of pressure from school, pursuing a degree in engineering, and with all the stress. I wasn't eating a lot. Most nights we would get dinner together on campus, around 5pm, and even though this was my first meal of the day, he would eat half of my food. Most of our conversations came to be about how upset he was that he was gaining weight. He was already on the large side and gained a good bit during our relationship. He was so wrapped up in his own body issues that he never even noticed that I was eating one meal a day. Even now. He doesn't know that I have an eating disorder, and I never want him to. In retrospect, I realize it wasn't his fault at all. I had started restricting before we met, and I learned later that addictive personality runs in both sides of my family, even specifically anorexia. At the time, he was just an easy place to put the blame rather than dealing with it myself. She was incredibly uninteresting. That's not something that you can tell them that they can readily change either. Some people just live monotonous lives by choice and won't don't know how to change it. This is one of my biggest fears. I broke up with my last ex because I found myself completely repulsed by him. He smoked, drank, ate nothing but junk food, and farted like a Clydesdale in his sleep all night long. His car was disgusting it stunk and the interior was covered in ashes and cigarette butts. The seats had tater tots ground into them. And you couldn't even see the floorboards through all the trash. His house was absolutely filthy too. It stunk of old smoke and cooking grease. Had old newspapers piled up in the corners. And you couldn't even tell what color the carpets had originally been. He started pushing for me to move in and I had to think of a way out fast. Other than being gross. He was genuinely nice and I really didn't wanna hurt his feelings. So I just said I wasn't emotionally ready for a relationship yet and broke up with him. He came back around a few weeks ago wanting to try again, but luckily I had already met my current boyfriend, who's not disgusting. Hell, another one in 2005 I broke up with a very sweet, caring guy because he had the worst breath I've ever smelled. That's it. 
he brushed his teeth regularly, but the breath just never got any better and I simply could not handle it. It was like kissing a toilet. I made up some story about how I wasn't good enough for him or something and he actually cried. To this day I feel bad about it. Sorry. Also, sorry. I broke up with my ex because of a hot pocket. 1. My ex was staying at my house because he was kicked out of his own place by his mother. He was 23. 2. He went grocery shopping for himself for the very first time and bought only a bulk assortment of hot pockets. 3. Upon opening the first hot pocket, he went into a dead serious, very angry manic frenzy because he didn't understand how to microwave it. And I quote. What the frick is a crisping sleeve? I told him I wasn't ready for him to live with me, and that I needed my space. That goddamn hot pocket was the straw that broke the camel's back. He was way too jealous and needy. I patiently worked at his trust issues for years, with no luck. It got to the point where I couldn't even go out for a girl's night without him tailing me. We already had numerous rational talks about space and trust, so even when I was perfectly honest about why I ended it, he remained convinced that I was cheating all along and had left him for someone else. TL. DR. Self-awareness is important for relationships. People. I was in an abusive relationship, and what finally got me to leave was realizing I had feelings for a friend. Friend isn't in a healthy enough place for a relationship yet, we're still close, and I'm less one inconsiderate but. He was boring and too clingy. Also he was clearly unable to get over his ex GF fiance. There were red flags all over the place. I am just gonna blame it on him being a rebound from another iffy brie coup. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.